Welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is Carolyn Holzman. These are my own experiences in SEO as an SEO, spanning the past 13 plus years. And as an SEO tester, you can expect to also hear about my testing and SEO research data. The views expressed here are my own and will not necessarily reflect Google's. I do not regurgitate Google announcements. I watch their feet. So for you independent or agency SEOs, rest assured, I get you. And for you business owners or stakeholders who don't really understand SEO, before I was became an SEO, I was a local business owner for decades. And I understand the frustration of being in charge, but not when it comes to SEO because of its smoke and mirror appearance. Confession's newest testing and research sponsor is the Dental Marketing Guy, Justin Morgan. He owns and manages a marketing analyst and service firm for dentists. You can find him by searching for the Dental Marketing Guy or clicking the link in the description. So let's get started. Welcome to episode two, I should say season two, episode 36. What a week in the wild and crazy world of SEO, right? So on today's menu, I'm going to touch on the update and search console and then do a little time travel and talk about how we as humans quickly judge whether things are good or bad. But when we add in the factor of time, whatever it was is quite possibly the best thing that could have ever happened. Oh yeah, that means an SEO story is coming up. (laughs) So this week I called the end of the helpful content update. And this update has been tantalizingly the most unupdatey update ever. Over the past 18 days, I've published short daily reports on the Crawl or No Crawl YouTube channel I have to share the data from server server logs and search console as I have been doing, but to also pick up any little clues as to what may be happening on this update. And, um, For listeners who don't know, Google updates are where Google changes how it rewards or punishes pages with specific characteristics. And they give them names like they're hurricanes, and I'll be including one of those in our time travel portion of the episode. And the game is always, well, you really never know how an update is going to go. And we as SEOs have been trained to wait in trepidation, although for me these days, not so much. So... What does it mean when I call it, when I say it's over? Well, first and foremost, the folks that run and admit they run the most SEO tests in the world are those at Google. And as an SEO tester, I know the number one cardinal rule of testing is not to do anything that would contaminate your test results, just like science experiments. It's just one factor that you have to focus on that changes to help shed light on the hypothesis, or you never really know what was influencing your results. Just a quick recap. On day one of the update, there was a new uh, mobile Googlebot Chrome build. And then on day four, the desktop version of that same Chrome build appeared, which is a very compressed time for Google. Normally it takes 10 days for them to work through that. Now there's lots and lots of crawling, and yes, I did see the uh, SE Roundtable post about John Mueller uh, yesterday responding to the question, if a high crawl rate is a sign of an update, to which John responded, no. But then at other times, other people at Google have said yes, or maybe, or no. So need I remind you that here we watch their feet, and the footprints are found in the server logs. So then on day uh, 16, they introduced another new mobile Googlebot with an updated Chrome build. Now, I'm going to say that the odds of that being a signal of the end of whatever this was is very, very high. Because remember, testers do not want to deliberately contaminate their tests. Also, this is the same, the exact same behavior of the update back in May where a new bot arrived on June 7th and then two days later, 
Google announced the update was complete. I also called that one, but who's counting? Okay, so, so watch their feet, people. Now we go to the time travel portion. We're going back to the year 2012, specifically my birthday. So April 2012. And this is where my day job at the time was running an optical media production company. Okay, it was CDs and DVDs for music labels, film companies, independent musicians. So they had a product to sell online and at their live shows. Now for my main keyword, and I feel like uh, I, I don't even want to re-traumatize myself as I tell the story, so I'm trying to stay in neutral. <laughs> okay, CD duplication, um, which was at the time how people who wanted CD replication spoke about what they needed. So I did not fight this. I used it and then got them what they really wanted. It was like there was a time uh, with, let's say, if you're photocopying something. I'm just going to give you an example. Uh, photocopying, that the amount of things that you're photocopying hits a tipping point where running a press becomes cheaper. CDs and DVDs were like that. So I digress. But... My main term, the Holy Grail, was literally bouncing nationally. Remember, this is not a local search by any means, but it was bouncing between the number three spot and the number four spot. I'm just going to let that sink in. It was pretty exciting. <coughs> so um, I was competing with the likes of disc makers and CD Baby. So it was, it was a pretty heady and busy time. The phone was ringing off the hook. I had more calls than the ability to answer at first. People were amazed at the number of deliveries, like my neighbors in the in the warehouse area. They were amazed by the number of deliveries that were hitting the warehouse. Now, my vendors, they were using other SEO agencies. I was outranking them, and one of them was not not a little. <laughs> I would say not a little curious, uh, basically came out and said, how are you doing that? I'm paying tens of thousands of dollars. How are you doing that? So it was it was my birthday. It's back in April 2012. My brother came into town. We were all laughing and having fun. And then I got a call from the office. Something might be wrong with the phones is what I was told. Uh, there were no calls, but the phone seemed to be working, but it was different. So they wanted me to see if I knew any other way to check on the phones. Yes, disaster had struck. This was this is not the time to talk to me about the uh, diversity of marketing channels, people. It is not the time. So I checked for where the page was for the term CD duplication gone. Poof. Like it had never been there. And then I logged into my search console and I found the love note that Google left me. Something along the lines of, we detected an unnatural link pattern. Crap. I literally felt my heart sink into my body. My brain was on fire and it was my birthday. I felt stupid. I rolled the dice and came up nothing. Well, I should truthfully say not as much. There was still business, but nowhere near the volume. Now, 10 years ago, there weren't tools like what we have today to measure, at least not available to me if there were. And as I sat on the curb in my own despair, I started to hear other people crying. Same thing had happened to them. It was like Google turned into the Grim Reaper overnight, taking down entire networks of sites, and it was happening everywhere, and no one knew what was causing this. I had just started to use a service that provided a platform for backlinks, and, and that person also got hit, but when she got hit, she started talking. And she did it publicly on YouTube and on her webinars. And honestly, it was like therapy. Now, it didn't change anything, but 
at least I knew I was not alone in what happened. And that frankly, if I had failed, there were others who had it even worse. So that's a data point. So who was this maven who helped me keep my chin up? Her name is Dory Friend, and I latched onto her videos like a drowning person. My, my son was involved in Little League at the time, and we were always at a game at night, every night during the week. And he was catcher. My husband was one of the coaches. And I was in the stands wearing everything I could wear to stay warm. And uh, I was up on the top of the bleacher with a phone up to my ear, listening to what Dory had found on her network that day, while all the time cheering what was going on. Now, all of us were trying to figure this out, and I was consumed with listening to anything that could solve the mystery to my misery. And then we heard that this was called, uh, it was an update that was called Penguin. And then she announced that she was holding a conference where all of us could come and she would have people speak to share what they were finding, or at least what they had discovered about Penguin. And it was going to happen in Sacramento. And it would be on a boat. And not just any old boat, but a former paddle wheel boat converted into a hotel. Ha <laughs> ha! Irresistible. Now, I, I had never been to anything that was all SEO, so I signed up immediately. I've never maxed out a card so quickly. And frankly, nothing has been the same since, but I just didn't know it at the time. And it was also the first time I met other women who were really doing SEO, not social media or, or PR, all props to that. But I met women working in the guts of SEO, and there weren't that many of us there. Dory, Ann Premazon, Kim Albee, and myself. But we saw each other. When I, when I say that, really, I saw them. <laughs> and, and I remember being the most absolutely starstruck knucklehead running up to Dory and saying, I can't believe I'm here and looking at you in person and not on a video. I was gleefully happy to have found my tribe. And the rest is history, or at least maybe another story. But that's what I mean when I look back on what felt like and was the biggest failure I had encountered at the time. Now, I had no idea it would change my life and the trajectory of my career. I had fallen into the CD business, but when it came to SEO, it was alignment of what I could do with what I love doing. Now, as I look back on hindsight being what it is, I can see how each step forward opened up new paths. Each one of those paths led to success and then a little more success and a little more. And that reinvention part, even you know, after being in SEO for a while, um, being one of the first SEO testers, and now to being able to run a correlation formula and understand it just a little bit more every day, to no longer be afraid of any update because it can be measured. To be a part of a group of SEOs that share and receive, and to be able, through my experiences, pay it forward and to help other SEOs become better SEOs, not just be the receiver of everyone else, but to actually now give. And not the least of which, to continue to challenge myself and keep moving forward. So I'm grateful now for what happened in 2012. What felt like abject failure had no small part in pushing me to explore what had happened. And without a doubt, many of the things have come come from that vector of my life. And I also know that curiosity is my default speed. Not everybody is wired that way, and I get it. So fast forward, I've been a speaker at Dory's SEO Rockstars for a couple of times now. In fact, I've gone to every single one of them. This year, it's happening in Texas in November. Woohoo! I had the opportunity also to speak about my approach to forensic SEO. It's basically SEO in reverse. You know, how to figure out why things are the way they are in search results. And I think of it as being a SERP doctor. It requires a little bit of each type of SEO, technical, on-page, off-page. So in fact, kind of 
as I'm thinking about it now, that is the same approach to how I figured out what happened in 2012 with a lot of help from a lot of people, but it really got that part of me wired up. And, and you see how that works? You know, like, how could I feel bad about that? I'll have a link in the description. So if you're looking for an event to come and meet other SEOs and get some of the most cutting edge approaches to SEO principles and ideas and, and approaches to running your own agency, you should look into it. I did way back when, and I highly recommend it. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for being a listener. Thank you to Justin and all the sponsors of Confessions that help support this work for themselves and others. And if you'd like to support this podcast and SEO research too, there's a link in the description. It'll take you over to Anchor FM. And I also have a, a bit.ly link. It's bit.ly slash confessions sponsor. There's two S's in there. If you're looking to be even a more substantial sponsor than those levels, reach out to me at confessions at American Way Media. Please subscribe. If you haven't settled on one source for your podcast, you can just Google Confessions of an SEO. You cannot miss it. It's now an entity. It's been my pleasure to be with you. Thank you for your time, and I will see you in the service.